Hi everybody, welcome to my basement. Never thought you'd be here, did you? Now that we're selling these shirts for the fight, $5 goes, every shirt that's sold, $5 of it will go to the Dr. Atlas Foundation, which I think you know a little bit about. I'm not gonna go into it too much right now, but it's a foundation I've run for 22 years now that helps families in need. Uh, people that fall through the cracks. So if you buy some, like I said, $5 goes to the foundation. And thanks for your support of the show. London Olympics, we're going through all the Olympics. London Olympics, right? that was the last one I did. They threw me out. That story, I have to go some other day. They threw me out. Hey. I mean, it's, it, they threw me out. Me and my partner, best partner I ever had, Bob Papa, threw me the freak out. Yeah, because we were talking about how corrupt the decisions were. And the next thing we would, <laughs> we knew there were guards like standing in front. Uh, you have to leave? <laughs> what? <laughs> we want to call a few more corrupt fights. Uh, you have to leave? Really? Really? Okay. And I finished up the, the gold medal, silver medal matches because the new president of NBC talked me into it uh, in like a, basically a phone booth. Uh, they called it a studio, a sound studio. Me and Bob Papa, we finished up calling the last fights. We had been there for three weeks, two weeks on the air, and they figured, Teddy, it's up to you. We either go home, because they did throw you out of the arena, <laughs> yes, or you can finish up in the studio. We finished up and we tried to, we were professionals. We finished our job, more professional than the crooks were that were robbing these kids. I got sick and tired of watching kids fall on the floor after they won a fight and start crying, after they put their whole lives into the Olympics. Didn't go to the prom, didn't go to graduations, didn't go to, to parties, didn't go out on Christmas or New Year's Eve because they were being Olympians. And then they had their, their work and all their sacrifice ripped away from them like it was nothing, like it had no freaking meaning. Like somebody on a freaking street that's just ripped somebody's chain off and, doesn't, and just makes them feel like nothing. That's what they did. So I, I, went on, I was on the air on NBC and I said um, a few things. I think the one that got me thrown out was when I said um, that I saw a bus outside Bob and they should pull that bus up and put all these corrupt officials on it and take them off and get them out of here and put them in jail. One of the best people that I know, Alexander Vozik. I can't talk much about because you people, it wouldn't sound like, right? You're talking about the guy that you're training around, but you could say a little bit, just a great person. And um, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be back training fighters. I'm back because of the kind of person he is. And he's a tremendous fighter. And uh, hopefully we can, we can keep it going. Hopefully I do my job because I know he'll do his. There he is, there he is. Make you guys happy. Pacquiao fans, there he is, and Bradley. Canelo, oh, I, I know I got Canelo fans, okay, yeah. Because I don't want just freaking, is this one he won? Yeah, because they showed him one he lost before. Yeah, he won the big right hand. One thing you can count on with Khan, you can count on three things with Khan. One, he's always gonna get paid. Yeah, he's pretty damn good at getting paid, isn't he? He's a good amateur, he won a silver medal. Two that somewhere along the line in a fight, he's gonna make a mistake. He's always gonna make a mistake. And three, when he does, <clears throat> he's gonna to go to sleep. Here's in all the Olympics. Which Olympics did I cover all of them? Did I get the, which Olympics is this? Oh, this is, must be Athens because it's in Greek. <laughs> Figured that one out, all right. Oh, here's the man right now. Number one fighter in the world, either him or Crawford, whoever you like. Can't go wrong, but there's Loma. Short for Lomachenko. Oh, we gotta put this here. This is just out of my respect for the armed services, for what they do for us. Without them, we ain't doing this. All the men and women who fight so we can have what we have. Army boxing. All right, you guys, so, listen. I, I always tell people, be accountable. It's here, I saw it. It would have been easier to ignore it. But then, then I'm not gonna freaking be doing what I say that 
you know, I want other people sometimes to do, right? And face up to what's there and, you know, even if it's a little tiny bit uncomfortable. But it's been a lot of years. But, um, hey, the guy, that's salute greatness, right? Foreman, at 45 years of age, he beat my guy. Michael Moore is tremendous. First light heavyweight, first heavyweight southpaw champion ever. Pretty damn good. But this guy was pretty damn good too. Hey, remember Freitas? He, he won a world title for a minute, right? And Diaz? Diaz too. That's nice. Isn't that done nice? That's like a painting right on, on your chest. I mean, that is beautiful. Look at that. I mean, that is really beautiful. These are really nice. Who did these? Hmm. I was thinking it almost looks like Le Leroy Neiman type look, but it wasn't. But these are nice. They're really nice. Bad blood. You saw this on the podcast, I think, already, right? De La Hoya and Vargas. Everybody, a lot of people thought Vargas was going to win. De La Hoya stopped him. And you know what? Most people would just leave this alone, but I'm going to touch it a little bit. Vargas, I think back then we talk about PEDs in the sport. He had tested positive. I mean, I like him. He, I mean, he was a guy that was very popular. The Duvas had him, main events. And they built him up and he won a world title. And he fought a tough fight with Winky Wright. I thought Winky Wright might have won it. They gave it to Vargas on his way to this fight, which was a mega fight. But he had tested positive. Um, for PEDs, but the only reason I listen, I whatever it is, it is. But and now there's always talk about that in this sport right now, unfortunately, and it's got to get figured out. It does, it does, because it can't be any of that stuff. Not in a sport where you using your hands to hit somebody in the head. You know, it's one thing if you're using a bat to hit a baseball, but if you're using your hands to hit something, you can't have anything in your veins that shouldn't be in your veins. But it doesn't take away. I mean, he was a tough guy. He was a guy that was very popular. But the, the reason I'm bringing it up is a lesson for the young people out there. Because if you have a chance to maybe teach something to somebody, I just think it's our responsibility to take that chance. And maybe you can teach somebody, a young person, something. Suppo he did test, test positive. I'm just talking about stuff that's documented, nothing else. And... He's still lost. So if, again, I don't know beyond certainty. I just know what I was told, what, I, what was documented, that he had tested positive for something he shouldn't have had. That's all I know. Yet he lost. He got stopped by De La Hoya, who didn't test positive. What am I, why am I saying this? I'm saying it because it didn't help him. It didn't help him win. If that's what he did, and that's what, the, at that time, the evidence seemed to point towards, it didn't help him. That's all. That's all I want to say. Help yourself. Depend on yourself. Don't depend on something else. Oh, remember this one? You De La Hoya, you still got some De La Hoya fans out there? You got some, right? I mean, there's still some out there. De La Hoya, he, I mean, he was the gold boy. I mean, he was a matinee idol. Yeah, he was. And the girls would go crazy when he fought. This was a fight. It was an interesting fight, very close. Who won? Well, D. Loyal won. It was a close fight, though, with Corte. Some people thought quite, they forget about I. Corte. They forget about him. He was a, that was a, he was a welterweight champ. That was a big welterweight, too. That was a close fight. That was one of the only fights I used to say, people, I would say to people, De La Hoya, one of the things that keeps him from being really special for me, he was a hell of a fighter. And he fought good fighters on the way up. He didn't fight these, uh, didn't have to fight, you know, uh, you know, the, the doorman from every hotel, you know, on 6th Avenue. You know what I mean? I mean, really, he didn't. He, he, I mean, he fought some good fighters. He was a good fighter. He was a good, he was a gold medalist. He fought good fighters on his way up. John John Molina, early in his career, 
He fought good fighters. But the one downside for him, for me, was he, I, I've said it on the podcast, where he would have a short circuit mentally when he fought the biggest fights. When he was in his biggest fights, the toughest fights, the biggest fights, he'd do something wrong. Trinidad, he runs for three rounds. What are you doing? Why? He got the fight in the bag. Why? Why? I mean, some people say he still won. Maybe, but he didn't. They took it from him. He gave them an excuse to take it from him. He, he, he fought the wrong fight. Mosley fights the wrong fight. He loses to Mosley. Always, always, Mayweather fights the wrong way. Loses to Mayweather. I mean, always would do something wrong. Would choose the wrong thing. Mayweather with the long jab, he's winning. He goes inside, loses with a great counter punch. Outside, using that long jab, you're fighting a faster guy, a slicker guy. You use the jab, you keep space, bang, bang. You take speed out of the equation. He can't use speed if you're out here. Mayweather can't use speed if you're out here, right? He can't counter punch you if you're losing a long jab and you're out here. So what does he do? He says, gee, if I do this, I'll win. I better get in here and fight in here with the great counter puncher who's faster than me so I can lose. Don't that, you figure that, I don't know. You know, there must be a psychiatrist out there somewhere, right? Call us up, give us a phone call, all right? Rob will put it up on a graphic later on, you know, how you call us, and right? If you're a psychiatrist, call us and give us your explanation. I got my own, we'll talk about it, we'll debate it. But in the meantime, De La Hoya, you can't argue the facts. Hell of a fighter, but always screwed up. Always screwed up the big fights, always. But the I Quarte fight, that's why I brought it up. The I Quarte fight, some people, that's the one where they're arguing with me and you're wrong. They argue with me and they say, but Teddy, one big one he won was the I Quarte fight. I don't put that quite in that category. It was close, he won, but I'm talking about the other guys, the Mosleys, the Mayweathers. Trinidad. Talking about those fights that he went a little, you know, a little haywire, cuckoo nest, a little bit. But the lot of, again, that'd be the one the Quarte fight. Oh, you forgot about Quarte, Teddy. He beat him. Here, take the T shirt. You get it. Okay? That's for the guy out there. That's for you. That's for the guy out there that's been arguing with me for a few years about that. That's your shirt, okay? You earned it, you got it. Oh, ho, 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 who says smart people can't box? Come on, who says that the smart amongst us cannot? Because I always say that is the greatest asset that the greatest fighters have, their IQ, their intelligence. Great fighters can't be great if they're not intelligent. Can't! Can't! So? Harvard Boxing, baby. Yeah, you didn't know it existed. It exists. Yeah. A couple of their guys that gave me the shirt. They asked me to come up to... Harvard's in Boston, right? Yeah. Uh, how would I know anything about Harvard? I mean, right? I mean, that's kind of like a... Actually, What's that, an oxymoron? Teddy Atlas, Harvard? Probably. But anyway, I respect them. And uh, they boxed. And they, they came to see me somewhere. They brought me the shirt. They asked me to come up there to, I think, to come by that gym. I, I don't think I ever got up there, but I got the T-shirt, though. I got the shirt. It's a nice shirt. Obviously, it's in good shape. I haven't worn it. And um, I'm going to start wearing it now. Let me see what size it is. Yeah, well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. But as soon as I get in camp, lose a little weight, I'm going to start wearing that baby again. All right? And uh, let me see. Let me see here. This looks crazy. Take a look at this. I don't know. No idea. But it's um, thump. Monkey fight gear. Barbados. All right. Yeah, I was in Barbados. I think we did a show in Barbados, actually. I think we did. I'm, I'm trying to remember. But I got a, I got the T-shirt. You go to Barbados, you got to get a T-shirt. I mean, at least. And I got one. And you know what? 
I'll finish with this. All right, brothers and sisters, I'll finish with this. Because you were part of this journey. You guys were part of this journey. And you're part of this new journey. It was an important part of my life. Friday night fights. Okay? Now I'll do it in the way that we did it on that last show, the way we do it in the business. Fade to black, baby.